Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp. And today we're going to take a look at the uh, NRJ F3K model from OA Composites, or basically from uh, Anton over in the Ukraine. This is a model I built for a customer. It's a uh, Carbon 30. And basically I've built it for him, um, just hooking up all the linkages and installing the servos and it came out to 185 grams obviously it doesn't have the uh, battery or receiver and it's not CG so I'll leave that up to the customer but I'll just go over it really quick and give you guys a few build tips that might help you out if you're um, gonna build one of these or thinking about buying one of these guys um, the NRJ is kind of you know similar to a lot of the latest uh, F3K designs it's kind of a high aspect ratio wing and a slightly longer uh, tail boom and um, I would say the overall uh, construction quality is is pretty good the wing fits the fuselage nicely uh, it has a uh, bottom mounted elevator here and basically just like a standard rudder setup um, building it was pretty straightforward except for basically the servo installation so I would say that you know doing the um, the peg and the the tails and the springs and everything is all very standard um, but you can run into a few not problems but it can be a little tricky to get the servos in the nose um, using the uh, supplied 3d printed servo mount the 3D printed servo mount is really nice in that it takes a lot of the guesswork out of putting the servos in. The servos, I used X08s and they fit the mount uh, basically perfectly. Um, the mount fit in the fuselage okay. I did have to sand the edges a little round, but that's uh, actually covered in the uh, online instruction manual that's available. This, do this does have a pretty detailed uh, instruction manual that's available online in like a PDF form. So that's really nice. Um, the quality of the finish, I would say, is average to good. So it's not, you know, the best I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst I've seen. I would say it's just kind of middle of the road. So about what you'd expect from a, uh, you know, average F3K model. You can see that there's a little bit of that kind of orange peel effect in the uh, surface finish. Okay, so let's let's move on to some of the uh, maybe some of the building points that I wanted to talk about if we flip the model over we see the control horns for the ailerons basically they're mounted right at the end of the ailerons basically flush with the ailerons um, I think the manual called for CA to install them or super glue but I actually used uh, epoxy with a little bit of cabosil and I made a nice little fillet on the inside edges here pretty straightforward as far as cutting the slots go um, I didn't go all the way through the top skin so I left the top skin in place so the horn is butted up to the top skin and I made sure that I put plenty of epoxy in there um, the thing that I noticed was after I installed these um, when I deflected the ailerons up, they would rub against the um, basically the center portion of the wing here, and I had to use some sandpaper to um, get a better fit or get a, a nice range of motion on the ailerons. And I took a little bit of video of that of that, so I'll show that to you right now. Okay, another tip on the NRJ is about installing the control horns for the ailerons. Uh, as you can see, the ailerons are installed right on, the, or the aileron horns are installed right on the edge of the ailerons here. You can see they basically sit flush uh, with where the ailerons are cut, like that. And um, you basically cut a slot here and glue these in. Um, I did not cut the slot through the top surfaces, right? So it's just a notch on the uh, bottom side. Um, pretty easy to do. The only thing I ran into is that when gluing these in after the glue was all cured up, 
um, and I moved the surfaces. I did get some rubbing or binding um, on this inside edge of the control horns against um, this part, the center part of the uh, wings. So I just what I did was I just used some sandpaper, uh, used some 220 grit sandpaper, and I'll kind of set this up and show you what I did. So basically I wrapped some sandpaper around the center part of the wing like this and kind of pulled it pretty tight. And you really need two hands to do this, but after that I just moved um, the aileron I just move the aileron um, backwards and forwards, um, you know. Oh, I probably did this for, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so, and, and uh, that created enough of a, of a gap to get me, um, you know, smooth um, interference-free deflection on both sides. Really, there's no, there's no problem on the downside of the throw. It was all on the upside where that horn kind of got into the center part a little bit. So you put that uh, sandpaper in there and just slowly start moving this. It's not going to want to go up very much, but every time you kind of make a motion, you try to push it up just a little bit further, and then eventually it's going to move a little bit more and more, and then you can pull the sandpaper out and check it, and you get uh, all the up throw you want. Okay, the other thing to, to mention is that when, do, when you're doing the um, linkages for the ailerons, you want to basically... Um, Install the horns first, and then make the bends on the linkages um, at the horn side first, and then then move on to the uh, servo side. And you don't want to glue anything in place, so you want to basically have this whole linkage done up uh, and and fit on both ends before you uh, glue it in place. Um, obviously, get your servo tray and servos mounted before you uh, move on to the uh, linkage. I took a little bit of video um, talking about the linkage, so I'll show that to you now. We're working on the um, linkages for the ailerons. You can see I have my horns installed here, and I've made the bends for... Um, on the wire for the aileron linkage and I don't have the tubing installed so what you want to do is basically after you make your horns you're going to want to make the this bend here and you're going to work from the horn towards the servo um, for your installation so don't glue this tube in um, you know don't fix the linkage uh, uh, at all so make these bends and then you're going to work towards the servos. So the next thing to do is to put your servos in and um, mark where you need to make the bend for your servos. Then you're going to put the tube in. Um, then you're going to make your bends, trim up the wire on this end and hook it, hook it up to the servo. And then we're going to glue the tube into the fuse. I'm getting ready to make the bends um, for the aileron servos. So I've marked my location here where I need to make the bend. And if I line up the um, aileron, you can see it lines up with that second hole there. Um, in the instructions, it says to make this L bend with the push rod uh, in, in place here in the fuselage. But I don't really see any reason to do that. So I'm actually going to remove this and make the L bend... Um, outside of the fuselage. I'm going to remove the push rod and make the L bend afterwards and then I'm going to um, put everything back in. Before you make this bend you definitely want to make sure to put the white uh, housing in place over the tube um, before you make the bend otherwise you're never going to be able to get this on. So here's my linkage. Um, I have the sleeve over the rod and I've made the uh, L bend here. It's a little long, so what I'm gonna do is get it uh, mocked up in the plane and on the servo, and then figure out how much I need to trim uh, to make sure the canopy uh, slides over it without biting into it. And before I uh, slid this plastics uh, tube over, I went ahead and scuffed it up with some sandpaper 
because you're gonna end up gluing it to the fuse um, on both ends. So now we can go ahead and um, install this and hook it up to the servo. Okay, another thing to mention is that the back of the pylon has a uh, a slot that the um, elevator control horn kind of goes into when you're pulling down on the elevator and it is necessary to uh, remove the foam from that slot and widen the slot a little bit to make sure everything moves and uh, doesn't hit anything and uh, I used a, just a small file for that but you're going to want to do that before you move on to gluing the rudder in place so clean up that channel first NRJ uh, quick tip on the uh, fuselage on the one I was building here, um, there was row cell blocking the uh, opening for the elevator um, wire and horn. So I would recommend before you glue on the rudder that you check this and um, clear out the uh, foam. I just used a uh, thin file here. Uh, that way um, you have you have more room to use the file and clear the opening if, if you had the rudder on here it'd be really hard so that's just a quick tip for you so when I was installing the uh, cables for the rudder and elevator I really tried to match these um, wire hooks to the um, shapes that I saw in the instruction manual and I ended up running into some issues with the uh, cables hitting the back of the other servos and the horns and things um, so you might want to just kind of forget about what they show you in the manual and kind of make your bends on your own um, trying to clear everything else in this area and also avoiding um, having the, these be these uh, hooks you know interfere with the nose cone. So it kind of took me a few a few versions, a few iterations. They're not the same on both sides. Um, they're little different shapes. You know, and um, I basically just trial, trial and narrated it till I got everything to work the way I wanted it to. So you might want to just think about that if you're going to build one that maybe the um, shapes in the manual aren't going to work out uh, for you. So don't be afraid to, you know, be a little creative and come up with something on your own. Alright, back at the tail we can see a very standard uh, rudder horn and setup for the, uh, the strings. Um, I just made a little um, hooks with some very small wire and attached the uh, cables to that with some crimps and I have my uh, rudder cable entering at the base of the pylon basically and I used a little bit of scrap um, plastic uh, pushrod tubing to make kind of a bushing so that uh, the cable doesn't uh, get into the carbon um, same setup on the elevator horn there. Again, kind of, you know, very standard uh, F3K stuff. Um, <clears throat> the kit comes with a pretty nice uh, throw blade. Um, I've only really been used to seeing the, the blade that comes with the strike, and this is definitely a step up. It's a really nice shape, um, very ergonomic, feels good in the fingers. Um, I basically just went by the manual. I have this kind of angled in a little bit and then I matched this angle to kind of get this um, vertical um, with the wing dihedral so that the, if the wings are level on the table this is basically going straight up and down. Uh, very easy install, um, very standard so you shouldn't have any problems with that. So overall I really, li I really like this model. Um, I really like the fuselage shape. It's super um, narrow and it's uh, kind of uh, you know f uh, a flattened out fuselage design. Um, I think it just looks pretty aero, pretty aerodynamic. Um, the cone is a little thin um, so maybe you want to be careful when, when catching it. Um, it's a little squishy but actually I don't think you'd break it because it just flexes and you know I think it, it wouldn't crack or anything. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really like the model. I think it's a pretty straightforward build. The only thing I would say is when installing the um, the servos in the 3D printed tray, go by the manual. Um, the manual is pretty accurate as far as placing the, the, the tray and the measurements and everything. I think that's all great. Um, do that by the book. Uh, but when you install the wires, um, you're going to have to cut the connectors off completely to get the wires through. 
and then reinstall them later. The other thing too is that um, you might want to reconsider um, actually routing the cables the way they recommend. Um, you may want to route them externally. And the only reason I say that is uh, if you need to replace a servo or service a servo and having it set up the way it is right now, you would basically have to cut the connector off again, pull the servo out, uh, replace the servo, uh, cut the connector off the new servo, and feed that through. So it's not a straightforward process to uh, replace a servo if you route the wires the way they recommend. So you may want to consider um, just, you know, routing them externally, maybe under the, the horns along this edge or something. You could actually cut little uh, channels or holes in this bulkhead to help you do that. Um, so that's just something to consider. I do think there's plenty of room in here uh, for a uh, really small receiver and a one cell like bubble, bubble gum style battery pack. Okay, I have another NRJ um, build tip. I'm trying to route the wire for the aileron servos um, through this small little hole under this uh, 3D printed servo box and basically I took off the connector and I'm trying to push this through it's basically impossible I did even try to uh, pull a string through and tie it to this but you know the opening is just not big enough on the front side the channel is just not deep enough I can get these in there and started but they they won't go the wire just bends and um, so basically, I'm just going to have to clip these off because um, these connectors are too thick. So I'm just going to clip these, this off, route the wire through, and then recrimp on some um, connectors. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you build one of these. Uh, you're going to have a lot of issues trying to get these uh, connectors through. So as you can see, I, I clipped the wire and it fed through really easily. So I wouldn't even try, you know, bothering trying to fish these through with the connectors on. You're just going to waste a bunch of time. You can just clip these off, um, get the wires through, and then crimp on new um, ends. And it's going to take a much, much less time than trying to get them through without the, with the connectors on. Oh, I did um, anchor the aileron push rods uh, both at the front here and then where they exit. Um, so... Where they exit here, I've used a CA on this end to anchor it, and then along this, basically from here back, I used a goop or shugu, or more of a flexible kind of glue, uh, because you do have to kind of bend these out to hook up the uh, control horns. And I think if you just glued them very rigid with super glue or epoxy all the way to the ends here, uh, you might have a really hard time getting these around the horns. As it is now, it works pretty good. So there's another little tip. Um, yeah, I installed the uh, servos, you know, with the angles they recommended on the ailerons, and we get plenty of travel um, both directions, tons of down, lots of up. I tried to um, keep this exit as long as possible, so basically with full... Uh, flap down you can see the connector is just starting to get into that uh, or the bends are just starting to get into the uh, push rod sleeve so I think it'll be plenty stiff enough because there isn't really much exposed push rod here to bend and then up here at the um, ailerons we only have about 10 to 15 millimeters of exposed rod and then it's glued back here so I think that the aileron linkage is actually pretty stiff Yeah, so a really nice model. Um, I think the, the guy, you know, Anton did a, did a pretty nice job with this thing. Um, I would, you know, highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to build one for myself. I think if I built another one, it would go a lot quicker and smoother. But yeah, so that was just a, a quick little look at the NRJ. Um, it is available in about three different weight options, uh, like uh, a light, standard, and windy. And there is a ballast provision in the, the 3D printed tray, and supposedly ballast sticks are available. I haven't seen any yet. 
And I think wing and tail bags are available, but again, I haven't seen any yet. I haven't had any come through the shop, but hopefully we'll get some here soon with our next order. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed, uh, and I will see you in the next video.